Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here in my garage, I've got Wrigley here up in her crate in my trunk. Um, this video, I'm going to be talking about how to train your dog to jump up in the car. This is something that comes very naturally to Wrigley, I'm not gonna lie. It's never something I had to work on with her other than just teaching her I want you to get up here and get actually cool stuff for being up here. So it's not something that comes naturally to a lot of dogs though. So I wanted to make a video on it of how I would train your dog to actually get up into your vehicle. Now, this is my crate setup in my trunk. Um, this is a Vario Cage Impact crash tested crate. I love it, I'm obsessed with it. Wrigley has really positive feelings about it, as you can clearly tell. Um, I didn't even ask her to get up here. She just started to station up here, so I'm giving her snacks for that. So she is quite comfortable in her crate. A lot of what this initially entails, if you're using a crate, is crate training, not inside your car. So getting your dog really comfortable with a crate inside of your house first, and then transitioning that to the car. Um, if your dog is a little bit nervous or anxious about the car in general, all of this training is actually gonna start outside of the car and not within the car itself. So I'm gonna kind of break this down into different steps for you guys, depending on the dog that you have. Some of these tips might be really helpful. So all of everything applies the exact same way, whether you're asking your dog to get into your trunk or into the sides of your vehicle. I would do it the exact same way. So I'm gonna show you with our setup here and you guys can follow along. All right, thanks, all done. Good girl. All right, so I'm starting with my climb platform that I have right here. And this is something that can be a really good in-between, physical in-between step between the ground and actually hopping into the car. Especially um, going in and out of the car, back-to-back -back repetitions, not gonna be great for your dog's joints. So keep that in mind, having something as an in-between step I think can be really helpful for a lot of dogs as well with just breaking the gap essentially between the ground and hopping up in your vehicle. So you actually want to start with teaching your dog to hop up on a platform. Good girl. Nice job. Um, I would train this the exact same way I would train like a go to place behavior, which I have made a video on before, but I would start by clicking and treating my dog for any and all interest in this platform. So I'm going to get her off of this. And I'm actually going to reward on the platform itself to build interest. Good girl. Okay, and we're at kind of an interesting angle here in the grass when we come this way. And this is a concept called shaping that I have a lot of videos on in my that I have a lot of previous videos about, but initially just teaching your dog to hop up on this. Now, with the platform, you could either shape them to get up on the platform. I have a lot of videos on shaping and how to shape a go-to-place behavior. That is exactly how I would teach this. So check out my video. I'll link it down in the description below for how to train a go-to-place. That's how you can get this one via shaping. Otherwise, if you wanted to do this fairly quickly and your dog is already pretty excited about platforms in general, you can just guide them onto the platform yourself through luring. So, taking a treat and targeting your dog's nose. Let me get her over here. Targeting your dog's nose. Hi, come here. It's hard when your dog already knows his behavior. Go find it. Good job. Ready? Good. Ready? and guiding them up. Good, nice job. This, this is a very, 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 very deeply ingrained behavior that Wrigley has been over and over again rewarded before. This is one of the first behaviors that she ever learned and it is arguably one of the strongest behaviors that she ever has. So breaking this behavior down can be a little bit difficult, but essentially, Taking food, targeting your dog's nose, and guiding them up onto the platform is exactly what you're going for here. Now, your dog, for actually getting into the vehicle, doesn't have to sit on the platform. We just need them to take that step up. 
Now, we also do not have to use a nice fancy platform like this climb that I have right here. It can be as simple as a step stool. I don't have a step stool handy with me, but you could put a step stool that is enough for your dog to put their two front paws on and then wide enough so that they can get they can get a back leg up there too, so they can really switch their feet from going up into the car so those back feet can come on as well. But it provides a nice in-between step. So I like to associate a cue with this one. I like to use the words hop up. Ultimately, when I'm asking my dog to get into her crate in the car, so I'll say hop up Good. and reward for her hopping up on this platform. Hop up. Okay, so once your dog is really comfortable with that, this is actually an exercise that I would recommend doing inside first and then bringing it out into an area that is right next to your vehicle. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is right next to your vehicle and practicing it there as well. Once your dog is really comfortable, really confident with it inside the house, practice it near your vehicle. Now, if you have the dog that is nervous around cars, around your garage, just in the presence of anything that has to do with the car, you're gonna take a couple steps back. So, work on the platform inside, but when it comes to working out near your car, I would start somewhere really small, okay? So, clearly, you guys can see. All done, good girl. I'm actually gonna close this because she will hop in and out of there all day long. <laughs> and that's not where we're going for right now. So I would recommend starting with something like this Ready Find a Game that I'm gonna show you guys here in a minute. This is something I would build up as a really, really positive fun game in your household first before you bring it outside into a potential situation that your dog might be a little bit nervous in. So all this game entails is I'm gonna look at my dog, say, ready, find it, toss the food, and click right before she eats it. Ready, find it. Ready, find it. Ready, find it. Good girl, ready, find it. So if your dog is a little bit nervous, I'm also gonna combine this game with something called the comfort line game. Basically teaching your dog that you can approach scary things, but you also are able to move away from them. It helps with building confidence in that moment as well. So all you're going to do is say ready, find it, toss the treat towards the car, ready, find it, and then toss one away. Ready, find it, girl, ready, find it. So we can teach our dogs, hey, you can take the pressure off yourself by just moving away from the scary thing that you're not a huge fan of. If your dog is not willing to go all the way up and take that treat, that gives you an indication. That's kind of their threshold that you've hit. So the next treat that you wanna to toss is just a little bit closer to you, a little bit farther away. As they get the hang of this game, you will probably see that they'll be more willing to get closer and closer to the vehicle. Ready, find it. Ready, find it. Ready, find it. Ready, find it. Good girl, ready, find it. Ready, find it. Ready, find it. Okay, so if your dog is a little bit nervous, I would play this exact type of game in your garage or outside with your dog on a long line so they can't get away from you around your vehicle when it is turned off completely. So we can start to build up really positive associations with your dog being actually near the car and having positive feelings about that. I would also use really high value food. So things like cheese and chicken and steak, little bits of those types of things are just gonna bolster the excitement piece for uh, the actual car for your dog. So after you work on that and your dog is looking really confident, really comfortable with working around the car, and you've worked on the platform inside or the step stool, teaching your dog to actually step up onto it, then you're gonna kind of combine pieces a little bit more. So we're gonna bring the platform back into play and I'm gonna place it near my car. Good girl. Okay, exactly where I'm going to place it when I actually have this crate open here in a moment and teach my dog to hop up this first step. Hop up. Good, very nice. And again, if your dog does not have to sit, that is not necessarily what we're going for here, but if they do, that's absolutely fine. You can click and treat them for that. 
Hop up. Good girl. Very nice. All right, all done. Hop up. Good. So getting it more on a verbal cue. I wasn't using the hand signal or a food lure that time. So in addition to something like this platform, same concept can be applied with a ramp, a dog ramp to actually go, go up into your vehicle. That's a really, really good one for elderly dogs, um, as well as flimsy little puppies <laughs> that you really shouldn't be making that large jump anyways. So um, I just wanted to mention that instead of something like a platform or a step stool, you could also use a dog ramp, same concept still apply. All right, so now, we're going to work on opening the crate door and hopping that extra step up into that. Now, you guys saw that Wrigley is very comfortable jumping up into the crate. That is not something that I can change about this video to show you guys an uncomfortable level of her in the crate. She's always been really comfortable with the crate. So this is something that if your dog is uncomfortable with the crate, I really emphasize working on crate training inside your house first. So these concepts can then apply to the crate out here. All done. So let me kind of show you what this will look like. Can you sit? Stay. All done. Good girl. Okay, so that's kind of that finalized behavior that we're going for. She takes uh, that initial hop up here as an in-between step and then all the way up into the vehicle. All done. All the way. And you guys can see how well we have conditioned positive things happen in this crate. She actually doesn't like to get out of it. All right. From here, what you're going to want to do is I would guide your dog up onto the platform pop up and then try to carry that momentum all the way into the crate okay now if your dog is willing to hop up that second step fantastic all done if they're not what i would do when they get right here is take some food and toss it into the crate itself if your dog is nervous again you can toss some food at the base of the crate right here at the very opening or right on this little ledge right here too so your dog can build up those positive associations with taking food from the little ledge first all done find it just like this and we kind of make a little hansel and gretel style treat trail all the way back into the crate okay hi i'm sitting here editing this and i wanted to add this note in like I said in the beginning, all of these concepts that I'm showing into the crate in my trunk also directly apply if you're having your dog jump into the sides, into your back seat of your vehicle. However, if your dog is really nervous about jumping into a closed-in space, I find that to be a really, really common pattern and issue with dogs that do not like to jump into the car, is go ahead, so let's say your dog is jumping into the right side of your back seat, go ahead and open the left-hand side door. Sometimes your dog just being able to see that there's an out, like a light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, um, that can actually be really, really helpful in getting them more confident to jump up into the car. And then you gradually work on closing that other door and the same level of comfort still applies. So again, I think that can be a helpful concept and something that you wouldn't see where I'm asking my dog to jump into the trunk of my vehicle. There's no other door that I can open here. So if your dog is way wicked, nervous about this, I would attempt your back seat first and teach that. And if you eventually want them to be in your trunk space, work your way up slowly to that. So instead of taking food, targeting your dog's nose and luring them up into it, a lot of times jackpotting the crate, basically tossing a bunch of food into the crate. And I like to make this little treat trail. What I'm going to do is just start to make a little Hansel and Gretel style, essentially, treat trail all the way up the platform onto the edge of your vehicle right here if you have that available to you and up into the back of the crate and then the last couple that you have stay toss into that crate go find it 
So your dog can follow this treat trail all the way up into that crate or into your car. There you go, good job. Okay, once your dog is in the car, I would also again click and add another several treats. Again, come jackpotting your dog for being actually physically in your vehicle. Nice job. If your dog chooses to stay in there, go ahead and reward them just a few times and then invite them to come out again. All done. Good girl. So, putting all the pieces together, hop up. something that I typically have this platform here for Wrigley to hop up into the car, but it makes for a really good in-between step. So again, when you're working on this, I would work on this platform or your step stool or your ramp, whichever one you have, inside your house first. Work on it as a really positive experience. Your dog understands a cue that means hop up onto it, put two paws or four paws if it's this big, onto that platform or that ramp and work that up as uh, a separate thing from your car initially, completely separate, different environment entirely. In the meantime, while you're doing that, come out to your garage or uh, your outdoor space and with either a long line on your dog or you're just working in your garage, you're playing that ready, find a game slash comfort line game with building up positive associations, being around the car and doing car things around the car, but it has nothing to do with the car itself. Then we can start to put the pieces together, bring your platform out into your space, work on platform training away from your vehicle, but it's still kind of near your vehicle. Then start to bring it closer to your car. And I would at this point separate out too. We can play ready find it games. And then sometimes we hop up on the platform and then we go back and we play ready find it games. And then sometimes we hop up on the platform and then gradually working your way up to actually transitioning to hop up here to then hop up into your car as well. This platform just happens to be an ideal height where it's almost the same distance from her hopping from the ground up onto here than from here into the car. So the last thing is if you have a crate that you want your dog to be in in the car, start with crate training inside first. Crate training in your vehicles is the exact same as crate training inside your house. So all of those concepts can directly be transferred over to your car. What do you think? Is that good? Yeah. So once your dog is pretty good at this, start to phase out the platform entirely. You can move to a smaller one and gradually make them smaller and smaller and fade them out. You can always keep the platform if you want to always keep it. Um, you can always keep the ramp if you want to always keep it. But for me and my purposes, it's not, well, it's not realistic for me to carry something like this around. So we're gonna phase it out. All done. Good girl. Nice job. All right, hop up. There we go. Good job. All done. Good girl. Good job. That's it. Good girl. Stay. So. If you get to the point where you're phasing the platform out, what I would do is again, when your dog is on approach, show them food and then toss that food into their crate for them. All done. Good. So we're still kind of communicating that same message of, I want you to go find the food in the crate. It's just a bigger jump this time. Nice job, Reeves. Good girl. I hope this video was helpful for you guys in giving you some initial steps on getting your dog a little bit more comfortable with getting into your vehicle. And I would recommend checking out my other videos for crate training tips, for teaching your dog to get onto a platform, go to place is what that behavior is initially called in my other video, um, as well as working on that ready find it game, that comfort line game with high value food. All of those components have to be done away from your car first in order for your dog to actually be able to do them and feel confident doing them around your car. So I would recommend giving this one a try and hopefully it works out for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions down below. 
Oh, she's just, she's such a good girl. Yes, she is. Nice job. For anyone that might be interested in this crate, can you move your paws? Thank you. This is our travel crate. It is a Mim Vario cage. Let's focus a little bit here, there we go. It's excellent, I'm a huge fan of it. This is the size extra large. Um, Wrigley fits in it how I would prefer her to fit in it. A car crate should be smaller than an indoor crate. It is an impact um, crash tested crate. So if you were to get it into an accident, this crate is not going to squish and kill her. <laughs> which is what we want. Um, so this, I'm a huge fan of this crate. It fits into, I have a CRV, fits into my car crate. Um, I will try to find it a link for it and post it down below, but it's great. It's, she travels with me a whole lot, so I needed something safe and secure so I can feel good about driving around all the time with her, and she's clearly comfortable in it too. We did a lot of work to get that, but yep, so... This is my this is my trunk setup, my crate setup. I've got a basket of goodies back there. Yeah, what you think? I also have this water bowl. I need to clean it, but it's this no spill water bowl. It's great for the car. All right, weeks. I think we're all done. Yeah, we gotta go fun places now. Okay, all done. Good job, good girl.